Okay, continuing on. Hope you're settled back in and recovering from your uh, journey. Plane flights and all that stuff. I know that can be stressful. I made that flight once back from uh, Dallas to Portland and it was horrendous. Thought we were going to die. The uh, turbulence was so bad. Anyway, um, so continuing on, uh, we've been working in the open E tuning. So we had, and we were using Amazing Grace uh, because it sits so well within the tuning. The other thing we discussed was um, I kind of uh, used the uh, the tune Amazing Grace, and we did it in the uh, standard tuning. I mentioned, you know, just to learn those notes and to get a feel for the um, for the notes and the timing and where they are in the guitar, and be, to be able to uh, improve your uh, grasp on actual music note reading. Um, something I'd like to suggest, if you're taking that at all seriously, and I hope you are, because it really will make you a better musician in the long run um, is just taking that small group of notes that we discussed last week, you know, the open D, the G, the A, the B, whatever was in there, five notes, I think. And get yourself a piece of regular manuscript paper and measure it out in either 3-4 or 4-4, four, four, you know, and, and actually write this out. You know, go through the go through the exercise. Write your time signature at the beginning. If it's four 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 beats to a measure, or three four, whatever the case may be, and then go ahead and just using those notes that we discussed, just put those notes into the measures randomly. It doesn't always have to be a, a note followed by a different note. It can be the same note a couple of times, but. Think about, you know, the timing, like you're going to put in a D note that lasts two beats, and then you're going to put in a D note that lasts one beat, and then maybe a G note that lasts one, and there's your four beats if you're writing something in 4-4 in, uh, four, four time. And actually do maybe 12 measures of that, and then play it. Count yourself in, get into the whole musical space, that whole musical groove, Decide on your tempo, one, two, three, four, and then try to actually play it and see how you do. As I said, you can do it in three, four, or four, four. And it's just really a great exercise um, to help you become more familiar with the notes, um, being able to make that connection between what's on the written page and how that translates to where you put your fingers on the guitar or what open strings you play. So I'd like to encourage you to pursue that. Um, take your time, and uh, if you're doing that, you'll, you'll definitely get some benefit from that, and I will talk about that um, a little bit more in future lessons. Uh, unless you tell me, shut up, I don't want to hear about that anymore. Uh, so getting back to the the uh, arrangement of Amazing Grace using the open E tuning, we had So that's what we had originally um, using the open E tuning. We had a couple of uh, little techniques we talked about, like on the uh, sweep the sound, doing that 
little hammer on, that little grace note. When you're doing something like that, you really, timing wise, you really only have the beat where you land. And the other one is just a grace note that's really just, we're kind of forcing that into that beat is what we're doing. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that this week as we continue on in the open E tuning. So we're going to take the same song and we're going to expand on the arrangement and take it up an octave. Looking at the, uh, uh, the, the newest page. So we have the open B followed by that open E chord. Number two, we just have that filler note. And then on ing, may zing, we have four and five followed by the open. So we have then to the open, 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 four, five. Okay, so here's the first thing we're going to talk about. Um, we're going to just enhance this lesson by just talking about guitar techniques that we can use. Uh, I know we've done this before, but just kind of a reminder, because what you want to be able to do is just begin to incorporate them more or less naturally. So I'm not writing them in all the time. I just want you to just try to perceive the possibilities, and here's what I mean. So I can play. Now, a very common guitar technique on that, the first time we see that four and five would be to slide into it, like that. Just adds that little bit of color. And then when we come to the full chord, we can do that again. So now we have dresses it up, makes it a little bit more interesting, as opposed to which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Can do it either way, but it's more or less just being aware that that will add some extra dimension to the song. So from the beginning, the little note there, down to th two and three, and then we get to the word sweet, where we go to the A chord. So we'll just slide the ring finger down to the second fret, add the first finger and the middle finger. And there we're on that A chord. And then we have the filler note, first fret. And keep in mind when I'm putting those filler notes in, that's arbitrary. Um, so don't stress out, you know, it's just the idea of putting that filler note in and, and just trying to put that volume wise a little bit softer than the actual melody, because when you're on that full chord, any of those notes in that chord obviously will work. And then we get to another hammer on, on the word the. Sweet. Back to the open chord, bass note. So from the beginning we have saved. Now we can do the same thing here again. On 
A wretch. Now on the word like, what we're going to do is we're going to slide from five to seven. Once again, that's just a grace note. So we have uh, taking it a wretch, uh, a wretch. Once again, that slide isn't necessary. We could just go right to the seven on the word like. Like. Okay, but once again, just to add some color, I'm putting that slide in. From the beginning. to the word me, we have open seven, dead, seven, seven, kind of an open B. And then we have the filler notes, we have the seventh fret, our finger's already there, and then we have to lift up the ring finger to get that five. So on the word me, we have me, two, three, and then going to the next line, we have the seventh fret. So all together from the word me, we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. We end up with a little bit of dissonance there. I like. You know how I feel about dissonance. Open B. And then we have another slide from 7 to 9. Once again, not necessary. We could just go to the 9. Those are all grace notes. And then we get on the word I once and so we've slid up, and then we're going to have seven and seven. I just go to my first finger on the word once. From the beginning. Okay, on the word once, we have this chord here, which is basically an E chord with an added second. That F sharp note there adds a second to the E chord. E to F sharp, one to two, E to F sharp. That note right there is F sharp. Open E as a filler. And now what I'm doing here, um, is once again just to get a an additional gu guitar technique in there what i'm going to do is i'm going to slide from the four four to the seven seven back to the four four now there's several ways you could do that you could just pick it once and slide it Obviously, by, if you do it that way, by the time you slide from here to here and get back to here, it's going to be quiet. You're going to lose some energy, but that's okay. You can hear how quiet that gets by the time you return. Or you could slide up and then pick it and slide down again. Or pick all three of them and just slide. The idea is the slide. Okay, how, how many times you pick those three in your right hand is entirely up to you. So 
once again on the word once, 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 that time I just slid the whole thing. And it's easy to get out of that slide because we just go to the two open strings on the word lost. So we have once, Now what I have after the word loss is I have the letter H and 1212 because once again just to explore additional guitar techniques as a filler note I'm going to put in the harmonic and um, you know how to play harmonics you just touch the string barely let me show you how that's going to sound um, I'm going to take it from the beginning, play it slow so you can see all these things. the word lost open strings which allows us by playing those open strings that frees up the hand so we can bring it up here play those harmonics and then that's just followed by another open string so that's actually quite easy because it's all open strings lost but and by playing that open B on the word but, that allows us time to get back down here to the A chord. Okay, from the beginning. slide every time just to drive the idea home and then the word now we just grab that chord open four three open four that just gets slid down from here to here we end with the open string let me do the whole thing as a play along a couple of times. I'll play it twice through. One, two, three.
should end with the just like the uh, one we did it in the lower lower register. Um, so some pointers on the when we're doing the slide. Just try to make sure that the entire hand moves up and back. You know, you don't, you're not just forcing the finger. You want to get the whole thing, the whole arm, everything moves there. Thumb two in the back, follows along. Okay. Um, Going down to the end of the song, the very last line on um, But Now I See. So we have that shape there from when we played the word on the word but, like that. Then we have the open string, then that, that shape just comes from here to here. That. So those two fingers just go from here down to these two strings from here to there. Okay, so um, that takes that a little further, gives us a little more to do in the opening tuning, uh, work on some left hand techniques, um, then to repeat, uh, depending on your, you know, the time you are dedicating to this uh, endeavor of playing the guitar, I would encourage the just also writing out of the notes that I discussed at the beginning. Take a logical approach, make decisions, three beats to a measure, four beats, two beats, however you can do five beats to a measure. Um, but I recommend staying with three or four for starters. Put your time signature in. Measure out your page. Put your notes in. Space them where it makes sense. If a note has two beats, then that should have a little bit more distance between that and the next note. So visually, it even makes sense, not just um, from the standpoint of understanding that the note gets two beats because it's a half note, but also when it's on the written page, you can see that there's a little more space between that note and the next note because that gives it the two beats space there. So visually, it kind of makes sense. And then once again, counting off, setting your tempo. The tempo can be as slow as you want. Using a metronome would be a good idea. Um, just to kind of keep you on track and just playing whatever it is you've written and doing that um, If you do that on a regular basis, you'll discover that you can uh, fill in eight or 12 measures in just a couple of minutes and play that and go through that whole exercise uh, In a very short period of time There you go uh, Any questions, you know where to find me. Bye